All right, here we go. So let's switch to an actual game table. There we go. So this week's stream is going to be short, I think. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of development on the solo variant rule set. In the last week, I've been focused more on getting my um, adventure that I'm working on into a, a publishable state because I sort of want to get that off of my docket and, and done with so I can focus more on this and some other stuff. Uh, but nonetheless, I did do a little bit of development on here. Um, it wasn't totally a wasted week when it comes to this. So I uh, talked a little bit last week about the campaign goals and adventure goals that I added. Um, I am building out the campaign goal table as you can see here, to um, I, I want to use the the dis, um, challenge and proficiency dice for this table. I think just because I think it's thematically cool and it gives a few little options. So with a despair, uh, I'm going to be tracking basically each result from the proficiency die is going to give something in a category, and then the challenge die, it's going to give uh, a twist on that category and also increase the recommended track length for it with a triumph uh, recommending 25. So like a triumph is like a really sort of like epically arduous campaign goal that you're striving for. Um, but as you can see, I've gotten very little progress <laughs> in that and uh, even the categories i'm still not sure i think someone's gonna be like personal development some might be like build out a community some is uh, track someone down something like that it'll probably be really sort of high level archetypes for each of the columns like a uh, find person find thing find self <laughs> find uh purpose i don't know um but something like that so that that should be cool and then i am going to do um for the adventure goals it's going to be uh just a challenge and uh not challenge sorry it's going to be a uh, difficulty and ability die uh dice are going to be the two rows i want to keep them using genesis dice because i think that's kind of neat uh especially when you're not worrying about canceling out, you're just sort of like treating them as different. Each face is its own sort of entry on a, on a table um, or an index into a table. So we'll, we'll see how the, that goes. The uh, adventure goals actually might end up being a proficiency and a challenge die as well. Now that I think about it, just because uh, there's a much larger range of different types of adventure goals. Um, but on the other hand, they're not as categorized or categorical, maybe as the campaign goals. But we'll we'll see how good we'll we'll do that when we get to it. <clears throat> and then the other thing, um, so once I nail that down, I think the last thing I really want to add to this, to where in my mind will be sort of like a system complete point, will be the uh, five room session builder. Uh, which will be an option instead of just going through. Um, so you go go through the scene, um, but the five room session builder sort of will build off of the um, five room dungeon system, sort of uh, framework, design paradigm, you could call it. And. Um, give some options of some prompts effectively to help you build that three to five act session uh, out of the sort of scene setting prompt that you generate at the top of the, the start of each session. So uh, that's going to be a little tougher of a problem to solve, though. I, you can see I had the start of it where um, I mean, you need an opening act, a mid act, and an ending act. Uh, the five room dungeon actually has a, an introduction or an open 
introduction, then a foreshadowing act, and then your mid act where you have sort of like r rising suspense, and then an end, and then either an ending act or if you're doing, um, you can split that into two into a uh, sort of climax, big battle, boss fight, and then uh, the surprise twist or achieve knowledge. Um, though I think that in a lot of situations you can probably combine that into just the ending act, which is like uh, the uh, catharsis moment and then um, the achievement moment, which might be a twist or might be a surprise or something, but those can be put into the same act, I think, a lot of the time. Um, for what the purpose of this for the purpose of this system. <clears throat> but we'll get to that later. Once I get those all of that done though, I think uh I'll sort of be at a point where I just wanna like keep running through a few games, maybe run through a few co op games and real really hone in on how to present the material and probably then start converting it into layout mode and final balance tweaking and stuff. There's not like a whole lot of balancing that needs to be done with this, so long as it's sort of generating, uh, pe causing people to, prompting people to, to create really interesting sessions without a GM. So um, the balancing side of it is not like really going to be a significant part. Most of it's going to be about figuring out the layout, making it easily digestible for um, an individual or a small group. So that, that'll be a fun project when I get to it. Um, but I need to finish my other stuff first, like uh, Guillotines and the Gallows, um, atypical adventure module that should be coming out anytime, anytime now. <clears throat> but uh, that's so that's where we're at with the development. But let's actually get some play in today. So, I'm going to do this and pop this out and get this squished over to here a little smaller. Perfect. So, I'm going to have both of these out and ready to go. Okay. To do. Get there. Okay, cool. So, what happened last session? So, we advanced our campaign goal just a little bit uh, by one, but nothing really advanced the adventure goals, so that's fine. Um, in the post play, I spent the meager amount of experience that I got to. Uh, Gain the net search talent because I think that is appropriate for USA. And that's been added and everything, so um, I can do net search with USA now. Which let's whoops switch to this. There we go. Look at what net search is real quick. So, net search. When your character has access to the network, they can use this talent to upgrade the ability of the next knowledge check they make. That turned twice. So it's a pretty significant upgrade. Um, but the difficulty of the check gets upgraded once. And a despair means they learn something seemingly relevant and believable information um, that, however, turns out to be completely um, and potentially maliciously false. So I thought it was a really cool talent, actually, for um, GM list too, because that can uh, lead to all sorts of interesting little side missions and side events. <clears throat> so, so that was cool. Um, but what did actually happen? Let's do a recap of last session. So, uh, last session...
Yusa uh, had uh, crawled out of the uh, toxic streams, out of Hivik Channel, and onto land, and uh, only to crawl right into sort of a, a bunch of scavengers uh, and disenfranchistos who are looking to salvage uh, the bioroid for parts when they realized that they were a bioroid. And uh, luckily, a mysterious doctor character, a street doc, showed up at the scene and dispersed the crowd and uh, was unable to perform independent repairs on Yusa, but used a few of their uh, his dwindling, uh, her dwindling slap patches. On Yusa, which managed to repair quite a bit of Yusa's wounds, uh, or recover quite a bit of number of Yusa's wounds, and uh, also means though that I, and I forgot to put this uh, that Yusa owes the street doc, um, uh, I would say, a medium favor for the slap patches. So, um, session three. So, yeah, what, what are we saying with session three? Session three is, um, so Yusa was a able to make it out of the channel, channel and onto dry land. Um, however, they uh, crawled right into a group of local uh, disenfranchistos and remember the banks of Hivik Channel are sort of like these enormous uh, favelas uh, sort of makeshift towns of the disenfranchised uh, or um, impoverished or even just people hiding from society for whatever reason for personal reasons or because uh, they're on the run uh, living along the banks uh, here and there there are these it's always raining because Hivik Channel is this uh, way that New Angeles accumulates cooling condensate from the intense air conditioning needs of uh, a mega city of its nature and uh, dispersing them just routing them out of the city so it's always raining as the condensate is condensing and and falling to the ground um it's not a good rain you wouldn't want to like st stick your tongue out and drink it or something uh, but uh it makes it very moody and uh there's also little mushroom farms uh that are sort of randomly spread around uh the the banks of hivik channel because the locals have taken to creating at least some amount of their own crops and produce because they can't depend on uh, receiving it from other neighborhoods in New Angeles. <clears throat> so a local group, um, a group of local disenfranchisos, uh, um, intent on salvaging the bioroid for parts. A mysterious um, street doc arrives though and for unknown reasons uh, decides to help Yusa and convinces the disenfranchistos to disperse before returning to her clinic with Yusa in tow. At the clinic, the, the street doc <laughs> yeah, I Hivik Channel Scarpy is is also my, I, I, it's tied I think between Hivik Channel and uh, Residential Unit 468 are my two favorite spots in Akadito. Uh, Hivik Channel I think is the most like thematic and appropriate, and is like it sort of brings to the front this part of New Angeles that certainly must exist in one form or another um, but we don't ever really get a chance to see in any of the official content and residential unit 468 i think is just dope as hell because it lets you bring in crazy uh house of leaves 
or Tartarus or weird crazy shit into your your game that doesn't typically belong in a cyberpunk setting. Uh, so at the clinic, the street doc uh, yeah, uses up uh, two of her dwindling um, supply of slap patches to uh, repair Yusa after failing to do so with her own medical skills. Or in her case, mechanical, actually. Um, street docs also have mechanical skills, too. And that is where we open the session. I think that um, at some point, Yusa... We're, we're going to sort of jump right into the after effects of the last session. Uh, there's no real time jump here. Uh, so actually, session to session has been almost fairly continuous in time sequence. So, But I think at some point, uh, the street doc led Yusa out. And... Uh, out, out of her clinic... Uh, while, of course, letting Yusa know that she expects them to repay uh, her kindness, uh, which, by the way, let's quickly do that. Um, in the journal, there is favors. So I never really developed Yusa's uh, directives that were still in play. Maybe I'll still do that at some point, but so far it hasn't really been something that I think has come up and been necessary. Um, but Yusa owes medium favor to, is it medium or average? Eh, it doesn't matter. It's the middle favor to um, the street doc. Uh, though she gives her name to Yusa at some point. And, you know, a big theme in this game for me is sort of uh, because of the Automata initiative uh, that Null Signal Games just released the first half of the new set, or the first cycle of the new cycle for um, Netrunner. And it focuses on Brazil, so that's so Brazil's been a big focus. So um, I think that her name is her last name is going to be like a super Brazilian last name. Um, it's like Oliverio or something. Uh, is a super common last name in Brazil from from what I've seen. <laughs> cause I've met a lot of Brazilians in Oliverio, uh, but. What will what, what, what will her first name be? Um, keeping yeah, keep, I'll, I'll just actually uh, we'll say that her name is uh, Jennifer Oliverio. Yeah. Uh. Oh, okay. Thanks, Scarpy. So it's regular favors, not normal favors. So a regular favor to Jennifer Oliverio. I'm gonna bold that just to keep that. Um, the street doc who repaired them. And owed, uh, for now, Yusa is owed favors by no one. So, Doctor Oliverio, I I, I I like to imagine that. Well, actually, let's develop the PC with the table, and see what her uh, disposition is generally. Let's start using more of this table. So, we will do. Uh, I wish there was a way to like roll. Um, yeah, okay. So let's do an unskilled roll. 
do that. Cool. So we're on our disposition table. This will say when a new NPC is encountered, we can figure out their attitude toward uh, your your character. So what is Dr. Oliverio's attitude towards Yusa? Yes, tables are fun. I'm trying to get into the swing of using the tables more rather than this spitballing stuff. All right, so we got two fail results. Um, I'm going to re-roll that because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the NPC is not going to be hostile. That's sort of weird. Um, well, I'll just drop it down a, a nudge. So, Dr. Oliverio is cautious. Um, so, Dr. Oliverio treats... Um, takes a cautious attitude towards um, Yusa as they uh, re regain consciousness um, and are led out of the uh, doctor's uh, clinic. <clears throat> and actually, I think this can be moved into gameplay. Or into there. So, and sh she, uh, yeah, introduces herself as Dr. Oliverio to Yusa, and Yusa extends gratitude. And I think Yusa says it like similar, like, I, uh, thank you, Doctor, I extend gratitude for your, your service. Uh, and I, at that point, the Doctor is going to tell them that uh, she didn't do it out of the gra out of the kindness of her heart. Uh, she um, the kindness of her heart of her heart uh, well. <laughs> and she expects Yusa to repay the favor. So, Let's start ro doing some rolls and seeing what that de favor might actually be. Um, and we'll go with the, uh, uh, we'll do the scene generation. So first, plot hook. Because I think she's going to explain that as she, as, as Yusa is following her through this dilapidated uh, shanty town along the banks of this toxic irrigation canal uh, that is dispersing and 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 removing the the waste of uh, New Angeles and Acadito in particular she's going to explain uh, what she wants from our bioroid so plot hook So first, let's remember, uh, how do we play? First thing we do, we generate a plot hook, random event, and set the scene. So let's do a plot hook. I don't think we'll need to do a random event for this, but maybe we will. We'll see. Uh, so So I'm going to draw, uh, well, actually, no, first I'm going to um, roll a d10. Yeah. Why is this freezing up? Please don't be frozen, frozen. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, God. Um, save an ally in peril. Okay. What is going on? Oh, why am I stuck in... Okay, 
let me just try reopening this. Sweet. Technical difficulties. Super fun. Let me close both of these. Okay. Ah, there we go. Something up with that. So. Plot hook. Um, six. Oh my god. Six. Uh, save an ally in peril. And uh, let's. This is where I think we can actually get a little bit more into. Oh my god, this is this thing drives me nuts. If you do it too fast, it like desyncs or something. Okay. So, uh, save an ally in peril. Um, let's see, like, maybe who that ally is associated with. So we'll do another D10 for the adversaries too. Or actually, no. We'll we'll well we'll see what it generates. Uh, maybe it'll be who they're associated with, or maybe it'll be who's standing in the way. Eight, a malevolent schemer. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so malevolent schemer. And we'll do, let's draw the theme focus now. I don't think there needs to be reward because this is calling in a favor, actually, right? Um, though, if it's just beginning to seem more like a, a, a very large favor than a regular favor. So let's draw a card from our Oracle deck randomly. Ten of hearts. So, um... Ten of Hearts is going to be a a natural people meaning or remorse is the focus. I'm gonna um, actually use the rewards card not to tr figure out what the um, reward is for this but i, I want to maybe i want to know like what this will help me figure out like what uh prompted the ally in peril like what the peril for the ally so we draw another one queen of hearts so First, though, let me just put this down. Um, natural. People meaning remorse. Okay. Um, but we don't... We'll see what that really means. And this other one is going to be a queen of hearts. And that's going to be um, an alliance. Personal, heartfelt, intimate. Oh, um, okay. Cool. So, what I think... Um, we don't have any momentum or anything like that yet. Okay, so what I think that the, um, someone close, um, to 
the doctor. Let's see, how am I doing this before in the past? Yeah, okay. So, um, someone close to uh, Dr. Oliverio. That's someone uh, I think Dr. Oliverio is... Um, Uh, clinical assistant. Um, slash nurse. Uh, has been abducted by unknown agents. Because I don't want to do a super huge session, so a, a big part of this is going to be just like tracking down, tracking them down. Um, so yeah, Dr. Oliveira's clinical assistant, nurse, uh, her, her ally, um, has been abducted by unknown agents, um, thus she is in, in peril. Um, the, um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll tackle the malevolent schemer thing in a second. So natural people meeting remorse. Oh, I, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I have an idea. So, um, really, um, Yusa is not aware of this yet. Uh, nor is doc is doctor um. Oliverio. Uh, really, um, the nurse is a runaway clone, and the unknown agents who have abducted him are um uh i forget what the like uh Jinteki teams are that like recapture rogue clones and stuff and and uh recycle them but are um Jinteki um what is called like reclamation agents for now or something um <clears throat> And they're supposed to be heartfelt and intimate. So I think that, um... We'll say that Oliverio, um... Won't admit it, uh... But, yeah, is... Um... Get a little romance story, side story here, is actually, actually uh... Very much in, in love with, um... The nurse. Whose name is I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> say like uh, I don't know, Fr Franklin. Um, <laughs> Franklin Pierce. That's his name. Maybe we'll change that. I'm having a, a block. So Frankie Pierce uh, is Dr. Oliverio's uh, much beloved and uh, very close uh, clinical assistant and, and nurse. Okay, so. I like this. So, um, we need to do the scene complication, though, to finalize, to finish the scene setting. The final scene complication. Let's do that. Let's do this. Decouple it. Ooh, success and advantage.
I think that uh, the campaign and adventure goal tracks, I, I want to have start, have them start having impacts on this too. So I think at different stages they'll add bonuses um, to these to these roles, these initial roles. So success and advantage. So success, uh, behavior, <laughs> NPC immediately acts. Okay. And advantage, um, the environment is different in a way that benefits the character. Well, all right. Um, we, um, so thankfully, uh, uh, or sir, um, at, Right as Yusa says this, or right as uh, Olive, uh, the doctor um, explains that she needs help tracking down, um, yeah, finding Franklin and uh, rescuing him. Uh, Franklin manages. To send her a uh, message on her pad. Um, uh, but I think that the message isn't like illuminating. Um, the message is uh, the message. Is, it's it's not like a heartfelt goodbye. I think. Uh, is a heart, yeah. The message is a heartfelt goodbye. Um, uh, thanking Dr. Oliverio uh, for their time together in the clinic. And, um, and telling her not to uh, feel bad that he always always knew something like this would happen um, because remember he's a he's, he's a runaway rogue clone that's been reclaimed um, but dr. Oliverio is uh, does not know that Franklin is is a clone yet hey glorious Zote. this is me running a solo Genesis game and occasionally doing development on it. So that is that is what is going on. Uh, right now we are establishing the initial scene setup for this particular session's adventure, uh, which I have um, warned or tried to warn people that it will be fairly short just because um, I, I, I just don't have the energy to do a real long session tonight. So I'm still setting all of this up, but yeah, so the, um, so yeah, as, as the doctor is saying that and they, we sort of jump to, uh, Dr. Oliveria walking shoulder to shoulder with Yusa, um, along the bank, the concrete or plascrete banks of, uh, the Hivik canal, the channel explaining this, her pad beeps an alert that she's received a new message and uh, she reads through this heartfelt goodbye from uh, from Franklin uh, who she's hoping Yusa will be able to help her track down and rescue and um, sort of uh, see like a her eyes get a little um, misty as as she reads it i uh, but this gives yusa an opportunity to um try and track down the uh try and try and do some like a trace effective uh basically of where the message came from and i think this is where we're going to get into some checks and we start rolling some checks for Yusa and get into the game. So, um, so Yusa uh, takes the pad from her though and uh, connects to it. 
uh, with with a some sort of like bioroidy type thing, and or actually it just sort of like starts tap typing away on it as a bioroid because um, he doesn't have any or they don't have any sort of like brain machine interface capability or anything like that. Um, So, however, user realizes this is a perfect opportunity for 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 them to um, a attempt a trace. Because um, yeah, Niso was actually yeah uh, was a sysadmin before or a sysop before uh, fleeing. So I think tr performing a trace would be like the immediate first thought that Yusa would have um, on the uh, message. And Franklin is not like particular. We're gonna say that Franklin's not particularly great at at sending. I'm gonna spend a story point to f do that actually, but um, Franklin is not particularly great at is not like trying to cover their tracks or anything or help either. But uh, yeah, they're just sort of like sending. Out, he's just sending out a message when he, he's able to. So. Um, so user realizes this is a perfect opportunity for them to attempt a trace, uh, and uh, that is, and yeah, and takes the pad um, from o Oliverio and begins the attempt immediately uh, without explaining to her. So we'll see. Maybe some of the threat will end up. Um, causing an altercation with Dr. Oliverio. So. So first things first. Sysops check. Uh, I do think this will be a hard check, however. Uh, just because it's not a typical trace, and it's not like you says like a bunch of uh, additional information, but he's just going to attempt the trace to see if they're able to discern anything about the message's origin. Ooh, one success. Perfect. So um, we gain a momentum because uh, a check was rolled. Remember, so that's that's the momentum rules. Uh, no threat was rolled. So no uh, entropy is generated. So we're at one momentum, which is good. Uh, so uh, it's only one success. And I, I do like to use the number of success or failure um, to sort of scale the respective success. So, um, I think you says able to track the uh, where would where would where where would uh, they be. But the user is able to track them to somewhere, but uh, let's see uh, what the. Yeah, I want like a detail question. So we'll go with. Um, yeah, we'll do a detail question. We'll combine the results of a detail question and a. Um, quality question. So first, let's do the quality question. And we say that use attracts uh, success and a threat. So, um, so more than expected. Some with inherent risk. <sighs> okay. Okay, I have an idea. Yeah, yeah, I have an idea. Um, there's an inherent risk in, in where they're they're going to. So, um, and let's do the. Uh, To the detail question, just to see sort of 
Yeah, I want to see if there's like any sort of yeah. We we need some additional information on it. So first, Oracle deck. I'm gonna uh, retrieve, return all the cards to the Oracle Oracle deck. Cool. My hand. Now I'm gonna draw one from the Oracle deck. What do I get? Ace of Spades. Neato. So Ace of Spades. A unique. <laughs> Mystical. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I don't know what that means, but I so I did have an idea for the other part though, for um the the quality. So with it, something uh, something more than expected with inherent risk. So more than expected. We'll say that um the trace uh it's gonna be closer than expected actually. Um the trace uh, the trace leads to the vicinity of um, the geo labs, which is also on ground level. And we'll we'll look at the geo labs here in a second. Um, a uh, ground level lab uh, that focuses on uh, clone uh, engineering and design, actually. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that so there's an inherent threat to that because the geolabs also is um, the geolabs is also um, a contract lab that uh, works for HB, NBN, um, and really anyone uh, with sufficient funds to, to pay for their uh, contract lab work. So going there is definitely, it would definitely be a risk to, to USA. Uh, but I th have an idea for what I can do with the other thing. So, check one thing. Um, the mystical aspect. You know, what would be cool. Yeah, let's let's bring in the mystical aspect. I think the mystical mystical aspect of it is actually going to be, um, Something is, is weird about the uh, transmission, I don't know, chain, we'll call it, of uh, Franklin's message. And uh, unknown to Yusa or Dr. Oliverio uh, is that Franklin is, in fact, a rogue Nisei uh, clone line. Uh, and Nisei are like the psi, psychic, psionic, whatever clones that Genteki experiments with. And anytime something really cool happens with clones in Android setting, <laughs> no matter who, Null Signal Games or FFG uh, or Edge, it's like always... Nisei clones because they can do like all sorts of weird psychic crap. Um, so, uh, so that's that's cool. Okay. I just want to check one more thing. I just want to make sure I um, I'm using momentum <laughs> and uh, right. Okay. So yeah. So the other thing with momentum is that I can uh, spend, I can add stuff to the pacing roll. Uh, if I need to for momentum or add a boost um, to any Oracle or NPC table roll. So I could have actually added a boost to something, but I don't want to spend the momentum because I want to build a, at the end of the session, we compare momentum to entropy. And if we have more momentum than entropy, then we're able to progress the campaign goal one step. So I don't want to actually uh, risk not getting that progression with the momentum. Um, Awesome. So yeah, Yusa 
uh, explains this and gives this information to Dr. Oliverio and uh, Dr. Oliverio I think is gung-ho and ready to go in guns blazing even though she doesn't have any any guns really uh, uh, but Yusa is a little bit more reserved, um, especially because Yusa is sort of still not totally jacked up, but is not in like a great state uh, physically. So Yusa is going to uh, y see if there's any other, uh, do some research on the net and use that net talent to see if there's any other way into the geo labs. So I'm going to um, do a check so that increases momentum by up to two, and. And remember, we also have a talent f uh, for net searches. So, uh, so it'll be a knowledge check. Um, yeah, I think a knowledge net check as they're just sort of like scouring the net to see if they can find anything. And um, so I get two upgrades and uh, ability upgrades and a difficulty upgrade. So, do I, um, yeah, one difficulty upgrade and then one, two. Okay. Ooh, a success and a threat, uh, which is, not that surprising, that means momentum or entropy goes up by one. So every time you roll a threat, entropy goes up by one point. Um, whenever you roll a despair, it goes up by the number of threat generated or two, uh, depending on which, whichever one is greater. So so one one threat uh, or and one entropy. And uh, let's review again what that one entropy means for us. Nothing yet, but we get another entropy and we start receiving setbacks and stuff. So, uh, Yusa asks Dr. Oliverio to uh, slow down for a moment and uh, identifies a way in that Yusa is able to find into the geo labs and i think that there is so let's f first write this down so i don't forget it um immediately after ending the stream so yusa uh is able to search the net for an old entrance into the geo labs and what we'll, we'll let's see what that threat does though um I say with the threat i was i would say that dr oliverio shouldn't come with yusa but that seems really like a, a big penalty for one threat <laughs> so um we won't do that but uh We'll say that there's no transportation. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So yeah. Um, it, so Yusa is able to search the net um, for an old entrance into the geo lab, and, and, and um, to search the net and, and find an old entrance into the geo labs. Um, that would allow them to enter the facility. Um, potentially um, unseen. So we might have a heist for next session. Um, that seems like that's going to be a full session encounter scene, so I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, however, uh, yeah, they have no uh, transport there. And this actually sort of works with how Akedito's traversal mechanics work, but I'm not going to really directly use the traversal mechanics um, just because 
I'm trying not to rely too heavily on, on the content in Akedito as I build out aspects of, of the GMless variant. Um, so however, they have no transport there. Um, and we'll need to uh, make their way on foot through the abandoned uh, and labyrinthine uh, structures of ground level New Angeles. And are they going to get anything to prepare? Uh, I, I actually, I don't think that they have anything that they can really prepare for this. And I think that's actually, um, I'm going to spend a GM point just to stop, to prevent any sort of like preparative uh, preparation for, for this track because uh, Oliverio is really champing at the bit to get going. So we immediately jump in to a to a uh, uh, it's gonna it's an urban environment, but it's also survival. So I'm gonna turn this into like a small skill challenge um, to tra to make their so that's gonna be yeah that, that'll be the rest of the session. We'll get all the way to the geo labs, and I'm gonna turn that into a skill challenge, I think. And uh, what the skill challenge is gonna be? It's gonna be a a relatively easy skill challenge. Um, but it's going to require a survival. A survival and a streetwise check, respectively. And. We'll be. Um, say six successes before three failures. Um, six cumulative successes before three. We'll say five cumulative successes before three failures. Because that can actually be a harder target to hit <laughs> than you'd imagine. I think three before five should be, or five before three should be a relatively like low uh, difficulty skill challenge. So uh, to um, successfully make their way to uh, the Geo Labs from Hivik Channel, and come on, on foot it will require six uncancelled sorry not I said uh, five five uncancelled um, successes before three failed checks so um, including at least one streetwise and one survival check cool so let's do that and let's see where this takes us so um, also we have the street dock here and um, I might have to make a copy of this NPC because they are now a named character so duplicate and Put this in the other for now. Boop. This is gonna be Doctor. Uh, what do we say? Her name was uh, Jennifer Oliverio. So let's actually jump over to Akedito here too. Um, so we're now zoomed way in. We're making our way the two um, of Dr. Jennifer Oliverio and uh, Yusa to uh, Geolabs. 
So let's see. We'll see if we need to consult our, our chart again um, for the uh, game record. So first check. Um, I think street. Well, yeah, streetwise makes sense. So who has better streetwise? Uh, I believe Yusa does. So Yusa is going to make the streetwise check. And um, I think streetwise will be relatively easy. Or, well, average. It's not going to be a crazy streetwise check. But uh, the survival is going to be hard. Because um, the streets are sort of like in ruins so like knowing where to go is not that difficult but figuring out how to go through rubble is is uh can be challenging Ooh, wow okay so uh success threat and triumph so okay cool so we get the one success um also skill challenges um make momentum go up um, also, there's a threat, though, so uh, that means we're at Entropy 2. Um, but we also get a Triumph. So <clears throat> I'm going to spend the threat, I th uh, think, and just give uh, Yusa a strain. And because this isn't really like a structured encounter, I, there's not... Uh, well, there'll be th there might be a strain recovery roll. Yeah, we'll do a strain recovery roll at the end of the the skill challenge, um, but he might they might enter Geolabs with no strain um, to rescue <laughs> Oliverio's friend, um, and I feel like Oliverio managed to rope Yusa into a very large favor. <laughs> this has become quite the the side quest of a. Uh, of events for for use of, for two slot patches but whatever uh with a triumph though yeah success uh yusa is able to sort of uh use their bioroid brain to optimally identify the proper direction to go and and major routes to take through the um not just the undercity but the ground level of the undercity um it's going to upgrade the and I, I think it's actually like maybe a little f sort of frying uh, their processors or something because remember uh, Yusa also s suffered a permanent loss to intellect um, because of that critical injury. So, uh, but it's going to upgrade um, Oliverio, who's going to do the survival check. Ah, uh, no, it'll still be Yusa who does the survival check, but Oliverio is going to. I'll say that Oliverio can assist on it, so it's at least going to be a bonus. Um, so it is going to upgrade the check and then add a bonus from Dr. Oliverio. Uh, but if there's any threat that's generated on this, what did you say? And it's going to be a hard um, survival check, we said. Um, any, any, any threat, the strain's going to hit Oliverio, I think. Or which is going to be wounds because Olivero's just a rival. Whoa, two failures, um, which doesn't mean anything in this situation because the trigger is just failed checks, but it's one failed check um, before three. Uh, that blows. Okay. So, yeah, we're at one failed check and one success. So we need to get four four more uncanceled successes before two failed checks. Um, with four advantage, though, <clears throat> they get lost in the rubble. Uh, they're going in the right direction, but they get lost in the rubble. But the four advantage, so... Uh, Streetwise check. It's like all 26, I think, right? One success. One threat, one triumph. Uh, survival check. 
It's gonna be um, failed for advantage. So with the four advantage, um, Yusa and Oliverio come across uh, a group of a group of friendly disenfranchistos. So there'll be minions, but it'll be like I'm gonna say four minions actually. Um, who are also sort of living in the rubble and yeah you said the palm star built into them and uh they don't have much to offer but i think let's see Two slap patches. Um, and uh, Doctor Oliverio, though, the, um, come across these friendly descent franchisos um, who are hurt. One of them is hurt, and Doctor Oliverio is able to use her emergency med kit to um, perform a check. So that's what we're going to do with actually for the next thing. It's like what, how good of the check does she perform um, and that could contribute to the skill challenge. So, um, and it'll be medicine. Yeah. And it was a, f wasn't a, a crazy failure for the, the survival check. So it doesn't have to, I, I don't think difficulty is going to be super high. It'll stay at average difficulty. Um, Cause it's just, Oliverio trying to like assist these random disenfranchistos in need of medical attention that they came across, and uh, but the point is that the disenfranchistos uh, will be available to help them later. That's that's why um, I wanted those advantages like that. So two successes. Uh, Um, so the so she, Dr. Oliveira offers medical treatment of them um, because they're hurt. So medicine. The heck? There we go. Two successes or three successes total. Just need two more. Um, and it's just, yeah, three flat or two flat successes. So I think it's going to be, uh, um, a group of four, four relatively friendly disenfranchistos. Also momentum goes up by one more. So we're at three momentum and, um, Yeah, so Dr. Olivier is able to, to heal them, so all four of the disenfranchistos. I was going to use threat uh, and certainly failure to um, reduce the number of disenfranchistos that are available. But it was a, it was a, a good roll, so. Um, she's able to successfully help all of them, and now... Uh, a minion group four will be available uh, in infiltrating the geo labs. Should Yusa and Oliverio require it? The music makes me think that this is probably like this sort of. Uh, surprisingly pleasant scene in the sort of like filth and detritus that makes up ground level and yeah we have this like moment where like probably around like a a fire 
in fact, of like a tire fire, but like a fire. Um, the disenfranchise of the maid, the, the doctor is, is doing her work and helping uh, them survive in what is really not an area suitable for human survival anymore. Um, so we need, an, we need another check, though. Something with a uh, likelihood of success. <laughs> so oh, Dr. Oliverio rolled uh, once, Yusa rolled twice, and let's do a second roll from Dr. Oliverio and see what we can have her do, though. So uh, she did a medicine check. They're sort of off the track now, though. Um, So we'll do a survival check, uh, which is cunning. Um, yeah, because neither of these guys have this. So, um, it'll be from Dr. Oliverio is now going to try and um, help the survival check, and, and Yusa is going to assist. So effectively, it'll just be raw cunning um, with a boost from Yusa. And I'm going to spend a story point to upgrade to one proficiency die um, because they really need it. And but I think uh, Yusa. Um, use of systems are still like rewiring themselves because of Saharki's crazy uh, sort of not icebreaker but supporting software that they used on Yusa and in uh, the run that Yusa was protecting against in session zero. So uh, and I think that Yusa's beginning to sort of um, experience, uh, it's like empathy, maybe. Maybe this is this is where th these sort of more human emotions that we would not expect of bioroids begin to arise in Yusa. And yeah, so it's going to be a, a survival role, um, and which is helping Yusa sort of understand when to help. Dr. Oliverio as they sort of are trying to climb over the rubble because before probably the reason that it failed was you know Dr. Oliverio was trying to like go through some old abandoned building and and clearly struggling at some point and Yusa just wasn't even registering it and now um, Yusa is beginning to register it because of the uh, witnessing her treatment of the disenfranchistos so let's see how that pans out though is it gonna help please do oh sweet okay <clears throat> Two successes, so we hit our uh, um, it's perfect. Oh, why does it always do this? There we go. So two successes, one threat, one triumph. So momentum goes up to four. Uh, entropy goes up to three, and we get a triumph. Um, but it is going to be threat, as uh, Yusa also understands that this is very strange. <laughs> that uh, it, 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 Yusa is experiencing rewiring happening in real time, and is is um, not capable of feeling fear yet, at least, but is definitely uh, beginning to learn what what that emotion feels like i think um and getting an idea of it because uh this is totally new territory for you so um but they make it to the geo labs um so the duo are able to make it to the secret entrance of the geo labs uh and now let's use the Oracle, actually, um, to get some questions.
questions. So, so is it a hidden entrance? I'll give it a give the oracle a binary question. Excuse me. So, binary question. Um, yeah, so green, purple, um, and also let's look at, uh, we have quite a bit more entropy today, <laughs> this session, than we have before, um, right? So we're at three entropy, so that's going to put us at uh, nothing on the NPC table rules, because we're not doing any NPC table rules right now. Um, but we are doing the oracle rolls, so um, we get set back on 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 that roll. Um, but I'm gonna add a boost onto it as well um, for one momentum because we have the one momentum to spare. Hopefully, <laughs> wait. Oh, no, we don't have that one momentum to spare, actually, right? Because we're at four and three. Oh, whoops. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we should be at more than four momentum. Should be at five momentum at least, I think. So, um, I'll spend the momentum to get us down to four. I did the math there wrong somewhere. That doesn't make any sense. So, uh, to add the boost. And the question that we're proposing to the Oracle is, is the secret, is the entrance that we come upon a secret entrance? Success, a single success. Uh, cool. <laughs> yes, it is a secret entrance. <laughs> okay, not as exciting, but a secret entrance. Um, is it locked, though? That same rule. Um, it's just going to have... And it won't be, is it locked? It'll be sort of... Because uh, the, the failure should be, it is locked. So it'll be, is it is it unlocked? Uh so I'm not burning any more momentum, though, because I, I don't want to lose the momentum. So it's going to add a setback to this, though. So let's see. Is it unlocked? Wow. It is unlocked. Oh, no, sorry. It is not unlocked. It is locked. Um, but... That's perfect. The door is locked, but uh, the um, let's see for Yusa the benefit we'd rather have. I Yusa does have skullduggery, I think, right? Yeah, skullduggery. But skullduggery isn't as good as doing hacking. Um, so, um, but the lock is electronic, attackable. So, it's perfect. And um, we'll do one more Oracle um, quality question for the Oracle. And it's going to be, what is the, um, yeah, how strong is the lock? How difficult is the lock, basically? Again, this is going to be here, but it gets this. 
So, let's see. Um, a wash. So it's an average difficulty, um, but with a threat, though, that there is risk. So... So the electronic lock, um, but the risk of failing the lock is to immediately set the alarm off, or fa uh, failing to break the lock, yeah, to break the lock is to immediately set off the uh, Geolab's alarm. And, uh, yeah, so they come upon, so yeah, Leviario and Yusuf finally get to the Geolabs, and um, I think that we sort of end the episode, the session, with them at the door, and uh, realizing that the door is locked, because of course it would be locked. It wouldn't just be, you know, even if it's a secret entrance, it would just be like an arbitrary, like, <laughs> here's a way into our high security um, facility. And... Um, Yusa examining the lock is like this. I can hack this lock, but if I fail to hack this lock, the entire facility will know that there are intruders. And um, that's where the session will end. And we will pick up the actual heist and breaking into, uh, into the facility next, next stream see how that goes uh, which is cool because that means that it will not need to be an entire uh plot generation thing in of itself um we can just sort of jump into like the pacing moves and the other stuff uh rather than having to deal with all the plot the scene setup tables so that will be fun i'm looking forward to that uh hopefully not too much combat because yusa kind of sucks at fighting but they're real good at hacking <laughs> so We'll find out, though, next week, I guess. All right, guys. Thanks for listening and joining me for this. If you're here live, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's relatively short session. And I will hopefully uh, see you, or you'll hopefully see me and hear from me uh, next week. All right, guys. Thanks.